Um, hello and welcome to uh, part one of uh, Gradient Descent video tutorial. My name is Che from uh, Northeastern University. So uh, today we're going to talk about Gradient Descent. It's basically a technique to find the minimum of a function. Now we've looked at this before um, in calculus that let's say if we have a function like this, which if we plot it out, if we want to find the x, right, we want to find the x where the function is minimized, we can see that it's 1. And to write this out, this expression is like this. What we want to say is, what this expression says is that, well, we're looking for the x that minimizes this whole expression. Remember that. We're looking for the x that minimizes this whole expression. Now, from calculus, we learn that all we have to do is find the derivative, right? We take the function, we take the derivative of this, and then set it to zero. So if we were to do that, we solve for x, and now x is equal to one. Pretty simple. Now today, we're gonna learn another way of doing exactly the same thing. Uh, called gradient descent, like right here, gradient descent. Um, and with gradient descent, um, we solve the same problem slightly differently, okay? First, we write the formulation. This is what we're trying to solve. And we assume that we don't know what x is. Um, so, well, we'll just pick a random one three, um, which is obviously wrong, uh, because you can see from here, three is not the minimum. So with gradient descent, the idea is you pick something wrong, or just pick something randomly. And then little by little, you inch towards the right uh, answer. That's the general idea. Now, the first thing we do is we take the derivative of the function the same way over here. That's the derivative. And then we study the derivative, study the derivative at the point we guessed. Okay, so the guess was three, right? So we study the derivative at that point. Okay, well, we if you plug three into the, the, the function, we'll get a four out, okay? Six minus two equals to four. So we know that the derivative at that point um, we know the derivative at the minimum should, should be zero. But if it's positive, what does that mean? Well, if the derivative is positive, that means we want to go backwards because, because the minimum is here, right? Now, if the derivative was negative, we want to go forward. So by observing this, we see that, well, the derivative, if the derivative is positive, um, we know that the values are getting larger. Therefore, we want to go backwards. Now, remember, if we had guessed negative 1 instead, we'll get a slope of negative 4. Now, if the slope is negative 4, then um, we want to go forward. Okay, I, I, I need to repeat this again uh, because we really need to hammer this into your head that by the derivative tells us the direction, whether we're getting warmer or colder to the actual answer based on the initial guess, okay? So here's the equation. Um, here's our initial guess, xi. Given that this is our initial guess, we want to um, subtract the derivative of this, which is, um, going in the opposite direction of the derivative. And that will give us the next guess. Next guess. So let's do um, a quick example. Remember, we guess uh, three, right? Now, if we, here's the equation that we're looking at. Oh yeah, alpha. I forgot to talk about alpha. Now, alpha is called the step step length. 
And for now, we will talk more about alpha later. But for now, we'll just just assume alpha is 0 0.2. Okay, now we can start with our example. With our example, what we do is we guess 3, and therefore we put 3 here as the initial, as well as here as we want to find a derivative at 3. So we know that we know that derivative here was equal to 4 because we calculated ahead of time, right? It was right here. So the der derivative at 3 is equal to 4, and therefore we plug 4 in here. And this multiplied together becomes 0 0.8, and the result becomes 2.2. .2. So this is our initial guess, right? 3. And now we move to 2.2 this way. Now, remember, the actual solution is here. So we have inch closer uh, to the actual solution. Now we repeat this process again. But this time, we use 2.2 .2 as the new guess. OK? Now with 2.2, .2, we plug 2.2 into the derivative and we cut 2.4. Our new guess is 2.2 now, and we plug 2.2 here, right? Which gives us 2.4. Now, 0 0.2 times 2.4 equals 0 0.48. And again, we have moved closer, 1.72. So first we went from three we move closer to 2.2. .2. We move closer again to 1.72. Of course, we repeat this again. Now, if we do this whole thing again, using 1.72 as the new guess, we will get 1.432. So 1.432. So it keeps going closer. Notice how 1 is the solution, and it just goes closer and closer and closer towards the actual solution. Seeing this pattern, you can guess guess that if you keep repeating this process, you can find the minimum point of the solution eventually. If you if you can repeat this, you simply repeat until like the function is no longer getting smaller. So what you can do is each time, uh, each time you repeat, right, you check whether whether um, the height is getting smaller and smaller. If the height is basically not getting smaller, it means that you've reached the bottom. You can't go any smaller. Okay? Now, this process is pain. It's a pain to calculate by hand. You don't want to do this because it's complicated. Um, but if you write like a small program, like a software, it is actually pretty simple to, to solve the, the problem. So I, I need to note that if you are looking for maximum, like so far we're looking for minimum, right? Uh, minimum point. But if you're looking for maximum point, it's uh, the equation is slightly different. Instead of negative here, you use a positive. And that's because the derivative is the same direction as the direction you want to move when you're doing a maximum. See, if it's positive, you want to go forward. If it's negative, you want to go backwards. And therefore, the derivative tells you the direction which you want to go. Now, with a minimum, the derivative tells you the opposite direction. If it's positive, it means you want to go negative. See, positive, negative. So. Uh, with the minimum, you want to use the opposite, which is a negative sign here. Now, with a maximum, you want to use a positive, uh, positive sign. So this will be a positive for uh, gradient the descent. Of course, if it's a maximum, right? Wait one second. If it's a maximum, it's no longer descending. It will be called gradient ascent. So gradient ascent versus gradient descent. Um, it's just terminology. So 
I think it's pretty obvious that the calculus approach seems to be much, much easier. So the natural question to ask is why would we want to use gradient descent at all if a uh, calculus approach is good enough? Well, we will uh, continue with this in the next video. But just for now, just remember this equation. Try to write like a small program so you can uh, solve it yourself uh, in C or C++, whatever. And uh, I will see you in the next video.